Hey, welcome to Hybrid 5, a discussion about the future impact of the suit's tech and world news leading towards a singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Wallace. And I got through it. Yes. It Let's just make it, it off the It sounded like too, such really. a chore, dude. It you, did. It was, it was difficult. It was difficult. We're colourful today. I am. Kind of. You've got stri- you've got black and white stripes. I so. have, again, my, I only have like three or four shirts that I wear. Ah. <laughs> it's like black, all this, all this, a few other ones. <laughs> Buy me some shirts. Oh, I should do that myself. Yeah. Really? Pretty easy to get shirts, really. We, we do live in a developed country. Damn it. Yeah. It's not Bulgaria. Uh, be nice no to offense to Bulgarians. I mean, you're great people. <laughs> I don't know anything about you apart from that. My roommate went there and he, you got stabbed or something. Right? So you're a stabbed no, he, he had to um, try and convince him, convince some pimp that he didn't want to oh, hook okay. a hooker. Yeah. Well, that's right. It's the land of moral pimps. Bulgaria. It can be their new slogan. This show is start off awesome. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, what have we got this week? Let's do a rundown. Okay. Well, uh, well yeah. You... Uh, Ted talk about cyborgs. Awesome. Uh, I have the IBM's Watson supercomputer defeating people on Jeopardy. Uh, Hugo de Garris has come out with a new essay. I love I Hugo like de Garris. De Garris. He's he is a man. Kind of. He's, He's cool. Crazy science dude. Um, and then next one, what was the next one I was doing? Oh yeah. The three monitors uh, by 3M. Well, not, I don't know. Three monitor multi-touch setup. Really awesome video. And then the future of energy. Yeah, future of energy. So that'd be kind of cool. We don't know too much about it, but awesome few talks at the Singularity University. Well, yeah. I heard one at Singularity University. I'm not sure what your talk yeah. was. I mean, we, we talk a little, we, we chat a little bit about energy every now and then, but yeah. it's not really our forte. Yeah, exactly. Our, our focus. So but it's really cool all the stuff that they're doing with it. Really cool. Like, I love this energy stuff. Like, yeah. who's orgasmic? Um, <laughs> orgasmic well, energy? Orgasmic energy is the best type. <laughs> I, well, you should probably go first while I finish. Uh, okay, let's start this one. Uh, this is a cool TED talk by Amber Case. Ooh. Case or Case? Case. Case? Oh, no. <laughs> she seems pretty. She, she seems nerdy. She's pretty hot. Oh yeah. Get Why not? Yeah. <laughs> um, she's talking about how we're we're already cyborgs now. And I mean, she doesn't bring too much to the table. She, like it's it's very mainstream. So like, hey, you know, your mobile phone is kind of an extension of you. Yes. I agree. <laughs> I can't agree more with that. But, but she articulates it fairly well. Um, so it's basically the idea of yeah, yeah we are already cyborgs. But we're I mean we're wearing technology. Like these shirts are technology. It really, is at, at a primitive stage. We don't consider them technology anymore. Huh. But and in that sense, we are we're so reliant on technology that we are literally cyborgs right now. Yeah. It's just it hasn't quite the technology hasn't become like permanently attached to us in some kind of biological. But see, it's funny that it kind thing. of has, but like, you know, Ken and Kelly's, like, no, well, that's it. Like, Ken and Kelly's idea of, like, you know, the technetium and all of that, that mm. technology is just stuff that doesn't quite work, but technology can just be anything there. And so, by matter of fact, that, like, this watch is technology, this shirt, like, getting my hair cut and having braces as a kid, that was all technology that physically yeah, yeah. changed. The idea of a cyborg is so, <laughs> it's a bizarre concept, because we already are. Yeah. I like this lady. Um, we should mention that too. Uh, te- Ken and Kelly just came out with his new Yeah, book. what technology wants. Really it's been coming for a long time, so... There's been lots of interviews. But as soon as it comes out, we're story. going to acquire it. Yeah, let, let's get the book and like do it for next week or something. Yeah, we kind of cool. It comes out. Um, oh yeah, and so out. as we're going on to this, case uh, case. So yeah, yeah, because now with the mobile phone, and you can just pull it out at any time, and you know you have access to the entire world. Mm. That's an extension of your brain. It's a bit like even even another primitive thing, like you know writing on paper is an extension. It's a cognitive extension it of is, your own definitely. brain. Um, what else does she have? So, so well, yeah. she said the idea of like, you know, reducing the point of travel, like chatting yeah, your wormholes cool and idea. stuff. That was kind of yeah. epic. She said as she was growing up, um, her dad told her about uh, wormholes and how you could travel from one place to the other. Mm. And she was like, I'm going to create a wormhole. I'm going to be the first person ever to create a wormhole. See, now that's an ambitious kid. I like <laughs> that. I really do yeah, like and that. And then she got too into like, uh, I think it's like technological anth- anthropology or something like that. Could be. Something like that. Um, and she, she figured that, well, right now, we can actually connect from one point here to any point on the other side of the world instantaneously. Yeah. And so, in, in essence, you're already creating... When you go on the internet, when you search for information right now, you're literally creating a time wormhole. Because there are two options. I actually wrote this on a, on a Reddit thing that got no traction, no no nose at all. The hive mind says no? Because I didn't see it. <laughs> I, I wrote, I wrote, it's pretty cool right now because when you actually, every time you search for information, so every, and, and, and that means like clicking a plastic button, pressing a plastic what button. about an, like an aluminium empty. button? A what? Aluminium button? Okay, whatever. It's Who has aluminium same. keyboards? Who doesn't? You. <laughs> Fair point. I but anyway, say. monkeys, press a plastic keyboard, whatever. And what monkey? You! Oh. It's all about you! Fine. It's never about me. <laughs> um, and yeah, and you, when you access information on the internet, you're either going into the past, 
So like this TED talk right now was written by someone so in the past, put up online. So I'm literally reaching into the past and grabbing that information that I want right now. Yeah. So that's a time wormhole. That is. I, I like this word. The time. wormhole metaphor, yeah. I think, is it, a, it's not a bad one. It's, it really clicked. Like everything else is like, mm. yeah, 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 extension of the self, blah, blah, blah. And the other one that I thought as well, if mm. uh, real-time data, like the real-time web, say you're watching a real-time feed from somewhere, yeah. or, or chatting to someone across the world on VoIP or Messenger or whatever, that's your, your space uh, wormhole. That's, that's, you know, traversing across space. Because you go on the other side of the world, like it would take you, you know, 24 hours to get there yeah. on a plane or, you know. Well, it, it's a, just a good metaphor of having like the whole earth just right there that any information, like tiny little wormholes coming out, we've always been trying to extend them as much as possible. Mm. But now any information real time anywhere in the world is directly here in our glowing rectangles. Yeah. And in our pockets is a glowing rectangle. Very true. And the other thought I had, the third one, mm. was that, that information uh, kind of directs the future, it directs our behavior. You are the information you read. Like your your thoughts, your behavior, yeah. your personality are the information you get, whether from yeah. like okay. friends or like when we look online, it, we only look at like, you know, text, singularity stuff. We don't look at fashion. Whereas yeah, you don't. <laughs> You're looking up about the latest shoe fashion and... It's, it's a little hidden, I'm trying to keep it secret at this point. I go around to big biker bars but and Google get Google knows, Gertrude. Google knows though. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, that's scary. I should stop doing that. So, so Gertie. Yeah. Alter ego is dead. Yeah, so anyway, all, all information in the past that you access is kind of affecting the future. Yeah. Because if you go and it's access this it. TED Talk right now and you watch it, that you're looking at past information and it's kind of changing your thoughts, yeah. your cognitive sort of arrangement of your, what is it, connectome or whatever that you want to call it. Yeah. And that's affecting how you behave in the future, so it's affecting the future. Yeah. Well, it's, it's that, that, cool. that uh, extrapolated thought later on that it's such a powerful thing that when you can actually record every bit of information that the, the human organism actually receives and gets, uh, that'll be the first time that you can actually properly simulate that person. That's when they become algorithms. Well, exactly, yeah. That's when they just become a part of the machine <laughs> because the machine's recorded every one of their inputs at, at their whole life, like from, you know, inception to... Is that the right word? Inception. inception. It is. Birth. It's the birth, yeah. The yeah. birth inception. Yeah. You've got to well, go through there, sorry. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> got a little bit confused there. Conception, not inception. Conception. conception. Bloody hell. It's like, <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> isn't right. This is not right. Three levels deep with well, birds. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, well, yeah. It's so, not how babies are made. Well, that, that's it. That, like, that's the very like. I'm sure it will happen a lot before then. But that's the definition of like, you know, the, the human being doesn't really matter when, from conception onwards, that all of that the information from that recorded into the machine, then it's not really. Needed. Yeah, you become an algorithm and yeah. you visualize a yeah, because then you can start working. Out. No, I, I like this okay. idea. We're all cyborgs. One last uh, metaphor. I really love the cyborg thing. That I yeah. say this to everyone. And they look at me funny. I even say this to normal okay. people. Normal people. What am I, a freaking wizard? <laughs> God. <laughs> I mean, what I say to just people who aren't interested in all this stuff. That you walk around the city and you see all these people with like white wires yeah. coming out of their ears, and people say we're not cyborgs. I mean, come on. Every yeah. second person has white wires coming out of their ears. Like we live next to a train track. Every second window, people with wires coming out of their ears. It's like, That's why I like um, sitting at my desktop with um, uh, headphones, like right. with the with the actual cord. Yeah. You plug in and yeah, like, that's it. You're going and you never want to move because you have to. You have to move. You're like, oh, I have to take these off. We are lazy, and then lazy, gotta, man. <laughs> lazy man, lazy man. Because I feel like, the exact same way. It's like I want you to share something on the network. Later. Yeah, you call me up on the phone. Yeah, I didn't have to. I didn't it was fair out. enough. It works well, but we are lazy people. Hey, wow. Except we spoke for ages on this one, so yeah, we're not sorry. lazy in that regard. Um, we'll, we'll breeze to others. Sometimes. Well, the others aren't, you can breeze through Well, yeah, this one's really good. This, this, well, this one's good. We can talk about this one. The other one was not really The evil Watson. <laughs> the, the evil Watson. Yeah, okay. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen this. Yes, um, well, I think we might have spoken about it a little bit before, but this has just gained a lot of traction. I want to go a little bit further on this. Uh, yeah. IBM's Watson supercomputer uh, participated in Jeopardy and it won. It is a total, it, it's voice synthesis. It's not like they typed in a question or replied. It was just the guy it's talking. Uh, called natural language processing. Natural language processing. NLP. NLP. Ah, yeah. learn some NLP. There's acronyms. Yeah. <laughs> um, lots of neurolinguistic programming. So that's yeah. nice. It's uh, <laughs> the it's, other one. But yeah, it's actually talking to a computer and it's actually winning. So this is like, you know, Jeopardy's quite up there, I think, as far as game shows go, is like, you know, pretty intellectual. Yeah. And uh, a computer's winning. So oh, it's a reverse game show. <laughs> <laughs> what is an apple? <laughs> Stupid way to ask questions. 
Possibly reverse. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's actually it's running on a supercomputer. Mm. It's not actually connected and to the internet, which I thought was pretty fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's weird. I don't know why they're not doing it. Well, because they can prove to it that, like, connected to the internet, you could just have, like, people feeding in information and all of that. You, you couldn't prove. Yeah, gaming it or people proving that. It's them proving that it's not the actual other guys going there. Even though after they finished the yeah. round, then guys jumped on and modified and stuff. But, yeah. And anyway, I check out the video. Like, it, it doesn't the percentage wise. I, I won't talk about the technical yeah, details. Yeah, so like, need to go about, about it. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's right. just the idea. Running on a supercomputer. Yeah, yeah. The, the idea that, I mean, give it another five years or so, and we'll have that type of power directly in our pocket. I mean, the Turing test is going to be beaten very soon I, I maintain the Turing <laughs> test has already been beaten in most regards and, but not by a panel of judges but and this was actually on a wait hang on I was going to say something TV uh, no <laughs> this, this is just a demo it's um they're actually yeah. doing the proper competition yeah. in February yes I think you're right I'm wrong yeah. I'll see if this article says that but I'm pretty sure that's that was it I think it is Oh, it's not popping out. I won't spend time looking. But it's so it's so evil looking. It's, they they're trying to make it like really nice and friendly cute with God. this like friendly little glow that spins around. <laughs> but it looks evil, and it it speaks in a robotic voice. And you're like, yeah. damn you, Watson. Well, it's a funny thing. Um, Kurzweil did a, did a thing about this, and it was an interesting quote that he made. That like, it, it's not that much more difficult to actually make it do a funny quip or something, or like relax the voice and actually just start making it more yeah. friendly and more to the human. Like, cared the other guy there, Kim yeah, Jennings, made, made a joke. joke. No, he it, or it it kind of made a joke. Yeah, well, see, that was it. Like, because the other guy something made like a joke. Was something about chicks I dig or something. And then yeah, the guy that said, "Let's finish chicks I dig," and I was just like, "Oh, yeah. hilarity from the computer." <laughs> Everyone laughed. And I, I like this big thing that we're getting closer and closer to. Like, I mean, we can speak to computers. It's smarter than us at trivia now, like speaking to it one on one. But yeah. I mean, we've got these milestones just hitting like all the time. It's it's right here. It's That's a, not AI though. Come on. No, no it's not, <laughs> yeah, not at all. Redefine what AI is. <laughs> exactly. Now. Uh, I don't know what this means, but it's just another amazing thing showing that we're progressing there. Not new philosophically, because we always knew this would happen, but the milestones just happened. The science is now being, the hypothesis has been proved. Sure. <laughs> Let's, Let's go, go with that. that. <laughs> Jinx. Oh. Uh, Look, I'll just leave now. I'm sorry. Does that mean I can't speak now? <laughs> okay. Uh, this was a essay by Hugo de Garris. <gasps> Who's he? Oh, we met him at the Singularity Summit. Yeah, he, he was, was awesome. He's he's very uh he's very doomsdayish. True. He's very dystopian world, but this one kind of had a, I think at the end, it was kind of like a, yeah, it could yeah. be alright. He's like a big uh, like a brain scientist, where he's been trying yeah. to create a virtual brain over in China. Yeah. And he's just recently retired. And, and he, he he's going to be a big war. Apparently he's like the antithesis of Kurzweil. Yeah, he's, he's the, the enemy. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kurzweil's good future, Hugo de Garros yeah. is bad. He's like, yeah, everyone's going to, you know, giga death. Giga death, that's right. A billion people will die because they'll be the, like, like we may as well explain that, because there's going to be the... Uh, Terrans, which are the people who are like, uh, you know, we shouldn't, we should just keep stay on the earth. We should, you know, remain human-like. We should remain animals, whatever, whatever. And then there's the cosmos who are like, no, no, we should become gods. We should explore the universe and do awesome stuff. I like that. Like we'd be the cosmos, but he's saying that this is such a massive conflict of ideology that there's going to be like wars over mm. it because well, you, you're going to get. Sorry, you're so you're going to get the artifacts, which are basically artificial intelligences yeah. that are going to be so trillions of times more powerful than humans that, yeah. you know, this is inevitable. And the Terrans will only have a small window of opportunity to actually stop the Cosmos and the artifacts yeah. from taking over. I don't think it's going to ever, ever going to happen. I think we're, everyone's just going to be Cosmos. The Terrans will, you know, they'll do their own thing. That's a bug. <laughs> they'll do their own thing like, you know, the Amish. Yeah, no one cares about the Amish. They have no impact on the world. They can go do whatever they want. Yeah, I, I feel that as well. I feel the cosmists yeah. have already won. That, I mean, like he did compare it to the idea of uh, communism versus capitalism, but I, I do feel it's a different thing to that. That every if you want your economy to survive, or if you want the thing to survive, you yeah, will connect to. You won't ever not use the internet, and yeah. I think it's not going to be separate. Article, it's going to be just um, the internet. Sorry, yeah. which well, I that was that was his main point. That's okay. that's his old book. This is like his new book, which is again the essay is probably promoting that in some sense. Mm -hmm. um, he's talking about the more like Moore's Law, but he's also talking about the internet's actually doubling every 12 months. Okay. Um, so he's saying that in 30 years, the internet will be a billion times faster than it is today. In 40 years, it will be a trillion times faster than it is today. Love that. And it's like, what could one actually do with these with these fantastic speeds, like amazing speeds? He gives a few examples there, whatever, they're pretty lame. 
Um, <laughs> but the idea is you know, yeah, pretty it's incredible, pro profound. Well, you, you can't physically think of what you can do. Like I mean, no. you can have rough. rough when you're talking rough about like, ideas. oh, you have like three D life size images transmitted that look so real. They well, that's it. Yeah, you have yeah. the you know, cyberspace real, like full on cyberspace. I mean, yeah. that's not it's not hard to think of it being even sooner. Than if you have all that bandwidth and processing, yeah. you'll work out something to do. Um, but he was, the other point he was saying is that. Um, this having an internet that's so interconnected and so powerful, you're going to event, eventually come up with there'll be one global language, mm -hmm. one global culture, uh, one okay. global media, and one global politics and government, basically organization. So he calls it Globa, which mm. yeah, is a pretty cool name. Yeah, I, like I, I disagree with the culture and the media, but I agree really? with the politics and the other thing. I think, no, I, I think culture. I don't think culture, because the internet more than anything has actually separated culture. No, but, I mean, it, it's brought cultures together so they're more tolerant of each other, but all these little cultures to, like emerge everywhere, like furries. Oh, true. Bloody furries. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, like divergent cultures online. Yeah. Or something. But it's still going to be on that... Maybe, maybe all cultures maybe would be joined together and be tolerant. Platform and culture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe the, uh, the platform underneath it, everyone would be like full out there killing and doing all that maybe, stuff. Well, maybe culture in terms of like ideologies. Like, as you think about now, most of, most of the Western world is Americanized. We're yeah. all, we all follow the American culture. But we still don't all have the same culture. ideology. I mean, like, you look at, like, you know, libertarians versus socialists versus, you know, communists versus greenies. Like, ideologies are very different. Okay. I don't know. I, I, anyway, yeah. I, I disagree with... I, I need to read his thing, of course, but I don't agree with that entirely. Yeah. I like the politics thing, but I mean, I think they'll probably be just yeah. making sure that Global Earth works. Politics. One language, that kind of makes sense. We already Actually, kind of have that in mathematics. Yeah, yeah, also education, saying, um, oh, yeah. the, because, I mean, you're already seeing it now, we're, we're saying to educate the rest of the developing world. Yeah, yeah. And bringing them up out of poverty, or helping them come out of poverty as best we can, which often ends in disaster, but anyway. <laughs> it's not, that, not that often. It helps more than... It does, it does help. Um, He's talking about, like, global satellite learning. Some of these accurate, like, terms, he shouldn't name things. No, it's, it, it hurts. The like, Degarish, just, you have freaking awesome ideas, just don't name them. Because yeah. when you name them, people are like, oh, you like that one of those, you know, 1960s yeah, no, futurists where you name things and they sound so stupid. It, like, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I agree. Just get the ideas forward and let's give it to Baker. Oh, wow. blue screen! <laughs> blue screen of death! Well, that hasn't happened sure, in a while. Sure. You may as well show them. Ta da! <laughs> Fail. That is awesome. <laughs> anyway, do you remember your stories? I don't <laughs> remember the name. Oh, yeah, Robert um, so yeah, you're talking about uh, global politics. The uh, interesting point was um, because the internet will be so fast and everyone will be all connected, you'll have more, like what we've been talking about before greater flow of, uh, of ideas and information mm -hmm, yeah. to the point where all your political leaders are actually going to be influenced by not just their national opinion but global opinion yeah so say for example now like everyone's like North Korea you guys are freaking retarded what are you doing if they're all connected to the um, internet and they saw that you know 95% of the world was like hey you know everyone 95% of the world hates our policies maybe mm -hmm. our leader might be doing something wrong here yeah and well, that's I mean, where you get the global homogenized. It kind of starts system. to happen with North Korea. I mean, they're so cut off from the internet, but I mean, the few people who do actually get it start to realize that, oh shit. Apparently, they have, they have burger joints over there now. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's tasty. With like, isn't it? with like our generic names, like, you know, meat patty mm -hmm. between bread or something like that. It was... Right. So, while uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the nation is starving, they've actually got fast food <laughs> for the masses. So, that's lovely. It's pretty funny. Let me start on North Korea. I don't, don't like that. It's very <laughs> scary. Same, like, same amount of people as Australia. Did you know that? Yeah. So, oh, it's a control of reasons. Reasons. Well, yeah. You think of our, our, our country, we have so many monopolies, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Our, our food monopoly is like this, this Coles and Woolworths, that's it. Yeah. It's just, I, I don't know. It's, I just it's, don't it's like worse than in the States, and they bitch and moan about Walmart in the States. It's not as yeah. bad as it is here. True. Anyway, um, my oh, next story. Yeah, cool. Okay, well, my next story <laughs> is. Uh, oh, you said also science based quasi religion. Well, it already kind of happens. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> You know, yeah. it was making a joke about singularity, and you know, people say it's saying religion. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's There's a lot of we were saying that before. There's a lot of comments. It's fifty-fifty. People say, "Oh, curse while he's great, good, good <laughs> ideas." But he's he's a really bad spokesperson. He's turning he's it into not, a religion yeah. and making it horrific. And well, see, it's not even it's not it's curse while a little bit. The problem, but it's also like you know the followers and people being too adamant ab about it and like just taking it crazy and. Also, the the term singularity. Yeah, singularity. It, is a it implies point. we get to this point, like, and then that's it. Then yeah, it's like a gradual change. Yeah, it'll still be it'll be exponential, exponential but still gradual to you. So I come up with a good word for gradual exponential change. Exponentialists. Exponentialists. Yeah, I, don't mind, I don't mind that one. 
Exactly. Oh, that's it. Starting up. Okay. Anyway, I'll go yeah. on to my next story because uh, we've been uh, talking about lots of different ones. Yeah, uh, this one's energy, a, man. yeah, this is a really basic this one. It's not going to be a twenty-minute episode. <laughs> no. No. Sorry, we said last time. We... Yeah. Oh well. Let's just just try. Uh, th- this one is really really cool. Briefly talk about this. Three monitors all together, all three touchscreen. Yeah. Like we have the video playing like now or something, and it looks really cool with just actually interacting in a cool interface that I'd love to actually start messing around with this thing. Yeah. Well, your idea is to have six monitors, isn't it? Six yeah. monitors, yeah. I'll touch screen, like, computer. swordfish style. Yeah. Swordfish style. It'd be great fun. But You're just the hack, whole way of going... Hack things with a GUI. Oh, definitely. <laughs> GUI I'll, build a, I'll build a basic... V, I'll build... What is it? I'll build a visual basic GUI and uh, trace the IP. Mm. I know. It'd be crazy. It sounds technical. technical. <laughs> Very. Anyway, yeah, cool thing, check it out, nothing too much here, it's special new UI, new desktop, wow, it's amazing, crazy, I want to mess with this and play with it, but nothing revolutionary, just cool. Yeah. Oh, is that, have you done your two as well? Yeah. Sweet, uh, let's, let's get uh, on to energy. Yeah. Future of energy. Okay, so yeah, should be pretty epic, the the main uh, one that I looked at, like, with the two were talks, so actually recommended by uh, uh, Jordy Lucas, who follows us on... Uh, on Facebook and Twitter, we've spoken a few times. So, Jordy, you're the man, you're epic. Oh, the net's down. No, the net's not down, so I can't actually load up the thing. But yeah, left a comment saying that we should actually talk about this, so yeah, check out the videos and all of that. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. Like, the, the one I uh, looked at was the one by uh, Robert Metcalf, who's the inventor of Ethernet. Ethernet. Yeah, Ethernet. 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 I don't know which one it is for me. But that was really cool, like saying the future of our energy and how that can actually be done in kind of the similar, it can grow in a similar way to the way that the internet was grown. And the idea of abundant energy and what we would do with abundant energy, I really like that okay. concept. Uh, what was uh, your guy? What was he talking about? Uh, I wrote it down. Ah, nice. Jose Cordero. Yeah. I forget That's who fun. he was. Um, <laughs> He Good was start. <laughs> he was like in Venezuela. He's done. He's like worked for the like UN and energy stuff, and okay. he's done some uh, Venezuelan. He was, he was almost like the the minister for energy of Venezuela or something like that. Right, right. He, he was a big guy, but um, yeah, he he, he spoke a lot about um basically the future of energy. Right, and where it's going, and and again, it's just all solar. Everyone yeah. loves solar because solar's got like you look at the the total amount of potential energy that we could get. Exactly. Solar is like vastly, there's far, far more solar than any other energy. Well, I, I wouldn't mind to solar. actually get the, this conversation going into more that way. Like, we brief, briefly speak about this and then we go, like, you know, Strap far out into the future, talk yeah, Dyson we'll, we'll Spheres and Galaxy, before. all of that, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we don't know too much about this, just really from it, but a lot of cool ideas are brought up. Uh, sorry. Ah, uh, right, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, roommate. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, really cool thing that um, the idea that I love from this that uh, Robert Metcalf brought up, like, fantastic ideas. I like, highly recommend watching his talk. It was really, really cool. But I didn't even know my computer. Why have I got it here? It's hot as balls out here. My God. Yeah. Australian summer. Um, yeah, really cool idea was the idea of uh, abundant energy. That's what really stuck with me. That's what kept me up a bit. The idea that, say, with the internet when it first started, like, every clock cycle, everything was, uh, like, you know, dedicated. Yeah, put on the fan, good idea. <laughs> but the idea, yeah, every clock cycle was like, you know, had to optimize everything, you had to do this, that you shared mainframes, you did everything like that. But now that we've got to that point that we've just got abundant computation, that we can just do it for any crazy stuff that we want. And so then he came up, he did propose a thought experiment, say that we had unlimited energy or abundant energy, we didn't need to actually conserve it so much, what would we do? And that's a really cool thing. I haven't actually explored those ideas too much, but like some of the things you were saying, like, you know, purposely driven cars and like uh, just, ev- oh, damn it, I can't actually remember what simulations. it is. Yeah, simulations, like any, any type of energy that you could move any physical object as much as you wanted anywhere, like do anything with it. It's a really interesting thought experiment. It kept me up a bit last night, just thinking of all the different stuff. Got into full, like, you wouldn't need to worry about, you know, like, doing any movement yourself. Like, everything would be just outsourced. Your own yeah. factory is just producing non-stop anything you wanted. Transforming anything into anything else. It gets very crazy. Just all automatically. Yeah, yeah. why not? Like, there's no energy concern. I mean, kind of now that we live with objects that have, like, yeah. a little bit of it. <laughs> well, now energy is kind of, like, the predominant. Yeah. Like, oh my god thing. Yeah. But say, like, you know, <laughs> flying vehicles for everyone, that, uh, like, doing, you know, know, being able to go anywhere at anything, doing all of that, without the monetary constraint or having to worry about it all. Hmm. Well, there's lots of cool stuff with it. But uh, that was the big thing that he uh, he brought up, that I, I really liked that idea. Lots of other stuff, but that was the, the brief thing that I wanted to mention. I really can't yeah. well, oh. um, well, this guy, I wrote a few things down. Because okay. <laughs> I couldn't keep it all in my head. Okay. Um, he's basically saying energy at the moment is already a $8 trillion industry. It's the largest in the world. So it, it, and it's pretty interesting that energy is kind of like the predominant underlying force of 
humanity yeah, of civilization. progress from civilization. Yeah. I mean, then on top of that layer, you've got the economy, which then yeah. dictates okay, where the energy goes. Where the energy goes. Yeah. And that's where you get crashes and, and all sorts and so of horrible <laughs> stuff. Um, but he talked about things. We'll go into the future. He talked about things like um, uh, obviously uh, the next stage, like early stage, is Craig Venter producing bacteria that can produce their own oil. Right. Okay, uh, that's an by, interesting one. By sequestering carbon dioxide and yeah, combining yeah, yeah. it with the water to create, to create oil. Well, that was an interesting thing that Metcalf brought up. Was like He was talking more about like the startup uh, atmosphere and all of that, about it's, encouraging yeah, people like, to do that. So, I mean, that's kind of the exact yeah. thing. He had the thing I mean, of nuclear. It's too much regulation. Yeah, so. that's that's, another, that's going to be within five years. Mm. Like, I'm always a bit skeptical about that because I think yeah. they've been saying that for he, a while. Exxon gave him half a billion dollars wow. to research this. Wow, okay. So it's going to happen. Wow. Don't be skeptical about that. Thing. Wow. Yeah. That's what he said. Half <laughs> a billion. Yeah. Um, and then he, uh, this guy, Jose, uh, went into a, very quickly went into other things. He said that, a few interesting stats, he said that the total Earth's energy potential is 174 petawatts. Oh, okay. What, what's the total Earth potential? I'm guessing like all potential energy. On like Earth. chemical potential energy, but what, what do you? I don't, I, I don't know. He didn't really extrapolate. Oh, okay. It's a right. right. It was like the potential energy on Earth is 174 petawatts, and like you know, currently you solar sun hitting it. It could be a combination of everything. Okay. Like all enough. wind power, or solar power, or geothermal, yeah. or whatever. It might it might exclude geo. It might exclude sorry, solar power. It might just okay. be on Earth. Fair enough. Uh, but the human usage at the moment is only 16 terawatts, so You've got a lot of ways going to go. go up. Um, but he also said. Yeah, yeah, but he also said solar power is just like exponentially growing at the moment because it is an information yeah. technology. Yeah. Um, but it's still like minute. Like we saw, um, we looked up yesterday that uh, Germany, they're really, really pushing solar power at the moment. They're like the biggest solar producer in the world. Mm. But their solar power is only accounting for 1.1% of their current total yeah, that's energy crazy. That's production, crazy. which is retarded. <laughs> um, and the cost of uh, solar power is de decreasing 10% per year. Yeah, that, that idea that if we could capture all the sun that falls on Earth, if we could catch an hour of that, we could power all of civilization, all of humanity for one year. Yeah. That's well, it. We're now here on the further things. Let, let's go down <laughs> that path. That I really like this idea of, say, that how we gave that, uh, how much energy we're using now and how much energy the whole Earth can use. Because yeah. there's yeah, going to be a few peaks. Gonna there's going to be a few uh, seldom crises. <laughs> Foundation. <laughs> you know, actually, big, big moments that actually, like, you know, define it all. And I guess the obvious first one, like, oh, I mean, you know, running out of oil right now, like that, that's obviously a big yeah. first one. So I don't know how I'll overcome that, but we will in some regard and we'll keep on going through it. <laughs> but I guess the next one that we can actually start speaking more about where it kind of does relate to the singularity and more expanding outwards is that I think a big crisis will happen when we're actually harvesting all the solar power that hits the earth. That's going to be yeah. a massive big thing. Actually, Jared Diamond speaks about it in Collapse. Funnily yeah. enough, uh, yeah, at the very end, that's one of his final things saying that that's going to be a big event. Earth. Yeah, because let's say like solar power like becomes a big thing. Sure, you've still got geothermal and nuclear and some of the other things, but yeah. it's when we can't expand any further apart from just so, getting so, all so the you're energy. Saying, you're saying so we solve our current issues and then we get yeah. to the point where when we're capturing all the solar energy and all the sort of geothermal, yeah. all the everything, and then we're right. like, and then we're still like, we need more energy. Yeah, because of course we're expanding. Because we, we like, we can't. We need more energy. We have to always have more energy. Yeah. Well, actually, this is another thing. Have you heard of the Kardashev Kardashev uh, Kardashev scale? You, you know, it's the type. Oh one. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I can't pronounce it. It's the type. Yeah, sorry. It's the type zero, uh, type one, the type two civilization yeah, yeah. where oh, of course. type type zero is us. Us. Well, Nearly. apparently he said we're at point seven. Yeah. Type yeah. one is using all the energy on Earth. Yeah. Type two is then using stars. Yeah. Type three is galaxy. Yeah. Then they did type four, actually, there's a random talks about that as well. Like saying like, you know, it, <laughs> lots of galaxies are like, you know, in the middle of what? voids in between the filaments and stuff. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Random ideas. But, uh, so what, what happens after we hit the peak of... We, okay. So we have, we have to go, we have to then go out and like, get closer towards the sun, I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I collect more energy Probably, probably the, the moon, I'm saying, would be another big thing. That'd be another nice, easy, low-hanging fruit that you go and chuck some solar panels up there and do, like, it's still yeah. like stuff in orbit as well, I think, but... Well, I mean, orbit and the moon, maybe. That's yeah. where you'd start actually start putting some more solar out there to actually start capturing it. And here's the funny thing. Here's the, like when you start thinking about it, go down the singularity aspect, you're trying to turn everything into a computer because 
course, why do you want all of that energy to increase your computation? That's the whole point of getting more energy to increase computation. Yeah. So what you'd start doing is you'd start to see the formation of a Dyson ring or a Dyson sphere, like just yeah. going out. That you'd use a lot of material on Earth and on the on the Moon and say whatever else we can get close to. Actually, start like you know building walls to start getting and the sun. Send it around the sun, rotating yeah. around the sun. Yeah, yeah. And then beaming energy back to us. There's another one called the Dyson something where it's just lots of satellites just sent around the sun and then coming back. Yeah, Fermi, Fermi Dyson or something. Could be. Uh, I forget the name. Yeah, he, mentioned, he mentioned that. Yeah, a oh, he did. Picture, yeah, space. This guy. Yeah. yeah, with all the yeah, yeah, like separate. Like so, there's still gaps in between. Yeah, but it's, just lots of satellites yeah. around it in a sphere type position. See, and that's an interesting that's thing. Cool. Like that, that'd be a, a definite. Like I, I'd put money on this. That like you know, thousands of years if humanity survives and all of that jazz. Blah 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 blah. But that'll be the way that it actually uh, actually need, goes there. We need like a hundred. <laughs> no, I, 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 well, I, I guess we could work it out if we're using that much energy at the moment. We could see yeah, the growth rate. Yeah, and work out how much Earth is now I'll and then how actually. far we have to go beyond. Yeah, because yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Because cool. yeah. then we could actually <laughs> work out that the, all the Earth, all the matter going around to actually just kind of get as much energy as possible yeah. until we reach the next crisis. We're, we're talking about here where solar cells are as, as efficient as they can possibly yeah. get. Ultimate efficiency. Like, so we're, we're say 99.99% yeah. efficiency. They can run as many trains as they like. Yeah. yeah. Not on coal. Like that train right now is shipping coal. Yeah, I know. We have a steelworks here, and they're about probably at least. Uh, I don't know. I know we don't count them here. There's a lot of trains. There must be like ten or so trains a day. Oh, easily carrying coal. That's yeah. that's not sustainable. That's not. That can't be healthy. <laughs> but yeah, well, so that it, it kind of does lead to that. that Let's get into the next thing we're talking about. Beyond stars. Well, that's what I mean. Like all of the energy in the say the solar system has been now used to go around the sun and say like all of Jupiter's been done and stuff. So yeah, what happens then? Well, then we we're like, okay, well, then you go to other stars. It's like, logical, because yeah, we've used up, well, or, or at least we're foreseeing that, oh my god, we're going to use up all this energy of our sun in our. We've got the system. Dyson sphere that no energy yeah. escapes from the sun. Yeah, but we, then we know, like, oh, we're, we either hit a bottleneck where we're using, you know, we're going to see that we're going to be using more energy than we need to, yeah. so we're like, okay, we need to go to the next star, all the star runs out. We probably do it before. We wouldn't be able to. Here's the here's the key. I think that makes it different from going from Earth to the Sun, from Sun to another star, yeah. is that you can't send energy back. That's what I think is a big difference. All right. Yeah, so we didn't it, talk about we didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought about it just then. That that would actually be something that it need because to be then a new colony. at the speed of light. Yeah. You, you yeah, transmitting energy speed. back to it just it doesn't seem efficient. Really, that you, you'd lose it as it goes. You well. would. Yeah. So what you do is you'd just go and do a new colony over there, and then the other sun and build yeah. a Dyson sphere around that. Because yeah, the the idea is that, I mean, if you, Voyager One. If you look at Voyager One, it hasn't reached outside our solar system yet. Yeah. Our freaking solar system. Yeah. Where one star, like you go look at those pictures with the scales, where it's like here's Earth, here's a star, here's, and then it does all these images, and like by the end, like Earth is just like you can't even see it; it's not the map. Yeah. By the third image, your brain, our, our primitive you little can't. brains, cannot even comprehend or imagine no. the scales at which the universe is operating in. When there's like you know, where around one star, there's a hundred billion stars average in a galaxy, a hundred billion yeah. average galaxies. It's it's too far thing. away that yeah. like if we look at Voyager now, I'm. I'm I think this is the right number, I'm not sure, I should probably uh, see, but it's, uh, I think it takes Voyager 1 36,000 years to reach another star at its current velocity. Yeah, you said something like that. Uh, today, because I was looking up today. It was tens of thousands. It was tens of thousands, I think 36,000, it might be. We'll see how good my memory is. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, up on yeah, so something like that, I mean, so I, I think we would actually, like, to move the Dyson Sphere out, go and get more energy, you'd have to actually start going around other stars and go towards there. Yeah. And it wouldn't be towards just any other star you want to start moving towards probably the center of the oh, galaxy where it's the yeah, most yeah. dense where the most energy can be found because then you don't have to travel as far between stars yeah exactly and then that leads to obviously the, the type 3 civilization on the on the scale yeah where you end up, yeah try and get all of the but you wouldn't have a uh, you wouldn't have a sphere with that you wouldn't have a dyson sphere i wonder what you'd have because it would they'd still be really far apart even at the most dense place with all the stars dyson. they'd still be dyson internet of energy yeah <laughs> you like have Dyson spheres with like carbon nanotubes or something yeah. equivalent in between them. Well, why couldn't that be like? Let's just say <laughs> that you get into the center of the galaxy, you start you like a Dyson sphere is kind of like capturing the energy, it's like surrounding the sun and putting them out for all intents and purposes because just <laughs> you're eating all the stars and getting all yeah. their energy. Why couldn't that be that say to look for advanced civilizations, you don't look for the bright galaxies because they obviously haven't been look for the dark ones. You look for the dark ones, but you can't see them, can you? Well, this is a theory. I right? don't again random theory. Uh, just don't know enough about there. physicists. Like, Nothing about this at all. We're like, okay, maybe dark energy, dark well, matter, dark so matter. It could you, be 
Yeah. Such civilizations. Well, just that idea out there that, I mean, if if we extrapolate this far, then that's where it's going to go, isn't it? It's going to have to be that that you need, you run out of energy. So you would capture them all and then they'd still have gravity. They'd still, they'd still send out signals. Maybe. Right. Well, there is the gravitational effect of it yeah. all. Yeah, still being there. You yeah. just can actually tell. We well, guess to go back to the other, the uh, previous one, like, uh, say we're, we're using all the energy in our solar system, we have this idea that um, once you'll get to the point where, because it takes so, even if you're traveling at near the speed of light, to travel from our star to the nearest star is going to take, like, again, what do you say, like 20,000 years, 36,000 years, years, or whatever the thing <laughs> is. Um, and within that time, like, can you imagine the amount of computation we would do on, oh on my God. in our solar system at that time? Yeah. To the point where it may even be that we would have to actually ration and sequester energy. Yeah. Because we could, if we got, in 36,000 years, you could use all, all the energy. The Earth, the solar system's energy, computing different simulations. Well, you just compute simulations of different, yeah. like fractal simulations of random places trying to find out new information because... Could you do that? Like, I'm just thinking about it now that, like, we say you could use up all the energy as much as possible. Do you think there'd be technology that we could actually accelerate the, the energy use of the sun? Because that, that's well, what we'd have to do, wouldn't we? Well, yeah, create fusion. Yeah. That, that was the other, the that was the other sun, point so. that Jose was saying. It's like, well, you know, beyond solar power, the best thing is fusion. Why not just, yeah. why not just create our own stars? Yeah. We you, just you need, need a lot the of hydrogen. energy. <laughs> we yeah. need the hydrogen. Yeah. Well, because that's it. If we could accelerate how much energy the sun spits out, because that'll be the other big crisis that'll happen. Crisis? Crisis? Ma- <laughs> making the sun more efficient. Yeah, making the sun more efficient. Why wouldn't that happen? Yeah. Why wouldn't our, our scientists and like whatever that form they take in that point yeah. to try and get more computation, try and make the sun more efficient? Give yeah. it more energy. <laughs> in the talk, he had, this, he had this interesting little like pretentious thing. He's like, well, you know, come on, the sun's just dumb matter. It just sits there and it, it's doing fusion. We're intelligent beings. Why can't we make that? I love it. I Why can't we it. just make the sun? And exactly. Then we have pretty much, you know, more more energy than we could use at the moment, but, you know, eventually. Yeah. Going to use it a lot. Why not? That would be another big issue. Make the sun more efficient. More energy out of the damn thing. That's a big thing. <laughs> well, what energy would we need to... Um, actually, this is the other thing we are talking about. I may as well mention it. Yeah. We we're saying that oh, it'd be great to actually work out, okay... Once we have, uh, we're running out of information in our solar system on the sun. Yeah. Where would we go next, and then what path would humanity take? Yeah, we could make the actual. Well, yeah, be, exactly. Because we go, we would start from here, and we'd be like, okay, the next obvious place would be the nearest star. Yeah. So we will go to the nearest star, and then there's next obvious place. Next obvious. Well, place. then, then there's no really no communication between those two. No. Much anymore. Then it's like, uh, where do you go from there? You, you could, <laughs> what, what you could end up doing is actually tracing out the path that hum, humanity or civilization, the singularity, the computation, like the computation, the machine. Yeah. You could trace out the path the machine would take into the center of the galaxy. Because you could say these stars, this and that, and you could actually map it out roughly. I think it would be possible to map it out. And that would and then be we, out, we, we might as well mention our theory, again, don't know how real, wrong or real it is, that black holes could actually be massively dense computers. Yeah, well, I mean, that, ex- that will but, explain why. Uh, with our current understanding, you can't get any, any information out. Yeah, and you can't so get denser just, than a black hole. Yeah. And so then that's, and that's the what, idea. And you look at CPUs at the moment, like, the idea is the, the, the closer you get the particles together yeah. and the electrons together and whatever, you... I mean, massive, there's awesome. massive yeah. physics problems here, like, just incredible physics problems. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> but you, from a layman's term... From a layman's perspective, if you, if you <laughs> just strap, like, the trend it's going good. down, it's good. I mean, even to, like, a neutron star, like just ultimate compressed, like nothing else that you could have computation because that'd be as close as possible with the most amount of matter. Yeah. So you could have neutron stars surrounding normal stars and computing different yeah. things. This is, <laughs> this is out there. It's but you, you can see our thought patterns, I hope, at least. Yeah. Just dense as possible. Then what? Well, then after the galaxy is done, then that's kind of a... Uh, well, Seem to get the universe. Yeah. And then reverse entropy. Yeah, reverse entropy, the last <laughs> question. So uh, solve that. And then we create the next universe. Exactly. And that's how it happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course, we could go further into this with the... <laughs> the other things, like, you know, warring between, but I think we should speak about that later. Like, you know, warring galaxies and the speed of light is a time limit and all of that, but we could talk well, about yeah, that that's for interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Will we war over energy as we do now? Yeah. On a galactic scale? Yeah. Well, because you know, like, galaxies with the, are so far. Or we, we, we just merge with their intelligences. But it'd be what would be the final form. But I think it'd be just a universal law that'd be the final form, which I think could be computation. I think computation is going to be the thing that takes over everything. It's going to be the universal law. Yeah. Whoever computes faster will just join with them. Yeah, exactly. We'll take yeah. over their system. No, don't take you. Join with them. 
Well, that's what I mean. You, you by joining, you adopt their system of computation. You don't take over. That's the same thing. Stop isn't using it? this primitive it's the human. Exact same no, no. Thing. In human terms, take over means raw control. But it is. They're, they're joining. using our. They'd own computations, us. Our intelligence. Yeah. They. They. We'd be part of their system. Because you could get the peaks in computation that, like, you know, peaks and valleys where, hey, you get into this, but you try to get out and you can't do it because, you know, you're stuck in a valley, but then one other person is on this other peak and they're stuck in their valley up there. And you help them out by joining forces. You help them out and you, like, you work out who's got the best. Yeah, you need us. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, we've probably gone a bit too far, but we can keep on going like this. I love this stuff. I love yeah. going this far because you just work out a few little weird trends and you go, what if? What yeah, the next, next, and next, and next, and next, and next. And you get those cool, like, thoughts. Like, we could map out the trajectory of a the machine's progress to the center of the galaxy. Yeah. That could be cool. But then the, we need people like you to come back and reassess our assumptions. Yeah, tell us where we're completely <laughs> batshit insane and why you can't even do computation. Well, we know why you can't do a computation in a black hole. Say maybe why you can't do it in a neutron star, but see, I know why you can't do that. Yeah. But why couldn't we eventually? I mean, please? Yeah. Assess our assumptions <laughs> and tell us your own. Yes. Extrapolate some more. I'm sure you come with ideas listening yeah. to this, like... So we've got the trajectory Write them somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah. No, like, on the, in the comments. Video. Yeah, video response. Give us a video response. It'd be good fun. It'd be awesome. Anyway. I mean, you can't be as ugly as us, motherfuckers. If, if people have it's tried. Not possible. They've really tried. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, we'll uh, catch you next so week. so sadly <laughs> on. We'll catch you guys next week. Yep. Uh, it's uh, um, Tristan Grace. I have to think I'm about Nathan that. Waters. I always think about it. See ya. Yeah. That was long.